Hey everybody, welcome back to a new video. In today's video, we're gonna be looking at the brand new 12 volt compressor fridge from EcoFlow. This is the EcoFlow Glacier. Now they claim this to be the world's first three in one, meaning it is a fridge, a freezer, and an ice maker all at the same time. Now I've tested a ton of these 12 volt compressor fridges in the past on my channel, and this is definitely the fridge that's packed with the most features. So I'm really excited to see how it performs. Now in today's video, we're gonna be looking at the standout features for this model. We're gonna be testing the real world performance with how much power it uses both in single zone and dual zone operation. We're gonna be seeing how accurate the temperature is inside using some data logging. And of course, we got to test to see how the ice maker works and if it makes good ice. So if you guys wanna learn more about the EcoFlow Glacier, you're not gonna to wanna to miss this video. Okay, so we're gonna kick off the video by opening up the lid and taking a look at the inside. Now, the first thing you'll notice is that there are two individual zones. You can run it as a fridge, freezer, fridge, fridge, or freezer, freezer. And what's really nice is that it has this removable divider. So you can actually run it as a single zone if you want. So you can take out the divider. And what's really cool is that you can store it up here in the lid. So you can lock it in place, make sure it's in there, remove the basket, and then it will actually close down and you have a single zone fridge. And then if you want, you can open this back up, take out the divider, so just kind of peel it out there and then put it back down in and then put your basket back in and you have a dual zone fridge. So super cool. I love fridges that have this hybrid divider design because it gives you a ton of flexibility. Now this fridge has a total capacity of 38 liters or 40 quarts and it's in a 60-40 split design. So you have your fridge, which is the large side, and your freezer, which is the small side, so it's 60-40. And you have an LED light on each side, so you can see your food in the dark. And there's actually a drain plug on the freezer side, so if you wanna defrost that, or if you happen to have a spill, you can drain it out without having to tip the fridge on its side or turn it upside down. Now, I've actually been running this as a fridge-freezer combination for the last few days, so I wanna show you guys how useful the internal space can be. Now EcoFlow recommends using the large side as your refrigerator. So I have a full gallon of milk in here with two Gatorades stacked on top of each other and the lid does close. Now for reference, I have three soda cans wide and two stacked up high. So you can do a three by two configuration and fill this whole area up. Now I am tracking the temperature in the refrigerator side. So we'll see how accurate the temperature is versus the set point. So I'm excited to look at that a little bit later in the video. Now I'm using the small side as a freezer. In the bottom, I have a half gallon of ice cream. On top of that, I have some freezer jam and with the other temperature sensor, I have some frozen veggies. And the best part is I also have some frozen bacon in here and that is rock hard. So the freezer is working well and so is the refrigerator. Now there are two types of gaskets that you can have on these 12 volt compressor fridges. You can have a foam gasket or you can have a rubber gasket. Now this has a really nice thick rubber gasket. It's gonna seal up really well along the top of the fridge and anytime you have a good air seal, you're gonna have good efficiency. So thumbs up there to EcoFlow. Now in the next section of the video, I wanna talk about all the exterior features for the EcoFlow Glacier. Now one of the most important parts about a fridge is how does the latching system work? Well, it's a very easy to use latch, and then especially you can hear it lock down and the lid doesn't open up. It gives you a really good seal. So that's always an important factor with a fridge. I like the latching system on this one. Now you have two very large handles, one on each side. They make it easy to carry the fridge around, but they do protrude quite a bit. Um, I would have liked to see just something that was a little bit smaller. Uh, they do take up quite a bit of space. Now I wanna show you guys the display on the EcoFlow Glacier. Now I have the divider in, so it's actually running as a dual zone configuration. The left-hand side is 30 degrees and the right-hand side is 26 degrees. What if you wanna change the temperature? Well, you push this temperature button here and it'll allow you to change the set point. So it's set to 32 degrees. Let's go up to 38 degrees on this side. You push the button again, you can adjust the other zone. This side's set to 26, maybe go to 32 degrees on this side. Once it stops flashing, that means it's set and then the fridge will adjust the temperature over time. Because I raised the temperature up, the compressor won't run for a while. Now, one thing that I really like about this display is that it uses these really large numbers and this black background and the numbers are white. So you get this high contrast display that you can read from really far away. Now this fridge also has Bluetooth connectivity. So let's jump into the app and show you how that works. Now I've gone ahead and opened up the smart app and here's the fridge so we can click on it. Now what's really cool is it shows you the temperature inside right now. So we have 30 and 28 degrees and the set point. So 38 degrees and 32 degrees. You can also set the settings for making ice. 
Now you can go into the settings for the fridge. You can change it from eco mode to max mode, which is nice. You can turn on and off the beep if you don't want that. You can also set how long the screen is on before it turns off. You have battery protection settings and you can change it from Fahrenheit to Celsius. One of the best things is you can actually update the firmware for the fridge. So if they wanna adjust any of the firmware, you can download the newest version. So I love EcoFlow Smart App and it works great with all of their devices. Now, as for the power input, you have an XT60i adapter. It's nice because this comes with a AC power brick. It also comes with a DC power cable and you have the ability to plug in a solar panel here to charge the internal battery. Now right here is the actual battery that you can purchase. This is a 298 watt hour lithium ion battery. On the back of the fridge, you actually have this port where you can plug the battery into. And when you plug it in and it clicks in, you actually can power the fridge all on its own using that battery. And you can also charge it up with car charging, 12 to 24 volts or solar charging or even the AC adapter. So pretty neat that you can have this built-in battery. Now the standalone battery does have a 100 watt USB-C power delivery port. And if you press and hold this, it'll tell you the status of the charge, which is pretty cool. You can hold it down and it will turn off. So it is nice to have that extra 100 watt output on the battery pack. Now, one thing that I like that EcoFlow has done here is they have this telescoping handle and wheels as an additional accessory. So you can save a little bit of money on the main fridge if you don't need these. But if you are someone that wants the telescoping handle or the wheels to help you move it around, you can purchase this configuration for an additional $99. Now, while I'm on the topic of price, let's go ahead and break down the MSRP for all these products. Now, EcoFlow is launching this with an MSRP of $1,099. And if you wanna pick up the battery and the fridge at the same time, the price would be $13.99 and the wheels and handles is just an additional $100 no matter what you do. Now they do have early bird pricing available for this product. The fridge is launching at $7.99 if you pick it up at its early bird price. And if you wanna pick up the bundle with the battery and the fridge, it's only $9.99. So you do save quite a bit of money by picking up these products early. Now, what about the warranty on the EcoFlow Glacier? Now, in the owner's manual, it states that this has a 12-month warranty, and EcoFlow did confirm that you can extend that warranty to a full two-year warranty if you register the product, and they did advise that there is a three-year warranty on the compressor, so a balance between two and three years for the warranty on this product. Now, that's pretty similar to a lot of the other fridges in the market, and if you ever happen to have an issue with this product or any other EcoFlow product, they have excellent customer service. They have a phone number that you can dial during business hours, talk to a representative and work through the issue. Now in my fridge reviews, I always tear down the fridge to see the model of compressor and the build quality inside. So let's go ahead and take a closer look to see which compressor they decided to use. Now they're using the YA DK70C 12 to 24 volt DC compressor. And you'll notice it's also mounted on rubber feet to help with vibrations. I really like the build quality here. You have a metal frame on the entire bottom of the fridge. You have these metal supports and all the wiring is really tidy. Now moving over to this side of the fridge, you have your battery compartment. Down here, you have your evaporative coil with a temperature sensor, so pretty nice to see that. You also have your drain line for your ice maker, so if you wanna drain that out. This tube connects to the outside of the case, so this is not just dangling here. But overall, very impressed with the build quality on this fridge. Well, now that I have the fridge put back together, let's go ahead and talk about the performance and efficiency numbers on the EcoFlow Glacier. Now I have a ton of tests into this fridge over hundred hours. And the rule of thumb is basically the hotter it is outside or the higher the temperature, the more the compressor will have to run and the more power it will use. So if it's cooler, it'll use less power. So I test at two different temperature levels. I test here in my office, which is around 70 degrees on average to get an idea of how much this will use as a single zone or a dual zone. And then I also put this into a closet with a heater at 85 degrees to estimate a summer day in the shade. So with all those tests completed, let's go ahead and jump into the numbers. Now to break up these results, I'm gonna throw a graph up on the screen. Now on the left-hand side, I have the 70 degree test and on the right-hand side, I have the 85 degree test. Each of these were a 24 hour power consumption test. Now the first one was running the fridge in a single zone configuration at 36 degrees and it pulled 200 watt hours or an average of 8.3 watts. The next test at 70 degrees was running in a dual zone configuration, freezer fridge, and it pulled 390 watt hours or an average of 16.2 watts. So basically double the amount of power as it did as a single zone. Now stepping up to 85 degrees ambient, 
I ran it as a single zone. It pulled 350 watt hours or an average of 14.5 watts and running it as a fridge freezer combo at 85 degrees ambient, it pulled 740 watt hours or an average of 30 watts. So this should give you an idea of how much power usage you should expect to see at each temperature if you're running it as a fridge or a fridge freezer combo. Now, another test that I like to run on these 12 volt compressor fridges is to make sure that the internal temperature is accurate to what the set point is. Now, I recently picked up two of these wireless Bluetooth thermometers so I could actually track what was going on inside the fridge. Now, I did two tests to verify the actual temperature. The first test, I had it set as a single zone at 36 degrees. And after 24 hours, the average temperature was 33.3 degrees Fahrenheit, meaning it was fairly accurate running as a single zone. Now in the next test, I was running this as a dual zone. I had the set point at 36 degrees and five degrees Fahrenheit. And after 24 hours, the results were 30 degrees Fahrenheit and 8.6 degrees Fahrenheit, meaning it was a little bit off when it was set as a dual zone. I'd hope that EcoFlow can release a future firmware update to help the temperature be a little bit more accurate when running as a dual zone. Now, remember we pulled eight watts on average when this was at 70 degrees ambient with it set to be a single zone. Now, how much power does it use or how long of runtime can you get when you're running on the internal battery? Now, EcoFlow claims that you can get 40 hours of runtime running as a single zone. And I'll tell you guys, in my testing, I fell a little bit shy of that. And that's because I like to run my fridge a little bit cooler at 36 degrees. I think they were able to hit the 40 hour mark because they had it set a little bit higher, maybe at 42 degrees. But running at room temperature, I got really close to the 40 hours on the internal battery. Now, I also wanted to test running it as a fridge freezer combo on the internal battery and having it set to 36 degrees and five degrees, I was able to get 18 hours of runtime on the internal battery. So very good there as well. Now, all the testing and performance I've talked about uh, so far in the video has been about the freezer and the fridge solely. When you run the ice maker, it pulls quite a bit of power. It peaks at 130 watts and it kind of averages around 120 watts. So let's go ahead and break down the ice maker and how it works and its performance. Now, a lot of people have been asking for a built-in ice maker on these 12 volt compressor fridges. So it's really cool that EcoFlow jumped on the opportunity. Now, the first thing that you'll wanna do is open up the lid and pour in some clean drinking water all the way to the max fill line. Once it's completely full, go ahead and shut the lid and then you'll wanna push the start making ice button. And then you'll see on the screen that there's a timer that starts and the fans and compressor kick on. Now, once this process started, I checked my watt meter and it was pulling around 127 watts from the wall, which is quite a bit of power. And testing with my sound meter right up next to it, I was showing 60 decibels. So the compressor and the fan do kick on pretty high whenever you are making ice. Now, after only a few minutes had gone by, you could already see the icicles forming in the ice maker. And after about 10 minutes or so, the first cycle had finished. Now it's important to make sure that you push the de-ice button so you can actually remove the tray. Now once that process is done, you take the ice out and you get these really cool cylindrical ice cubes. Now it takes about 12 to 11 minutes to make each batch of ice and I was able to do four of them within an hour and fill up this medium bowl, which was pretty impressive. Now I did notice the water level will go from max down to the min mark within those four batches so you'd want to fill it up after that. And once you're done with it, you can drain the water out through the drain tube on the side of the fridge. And once it's done dripping, you just hook it back up and you're good to go. Now, what did you guys think about that process of making ice? I thought it was super simple. All you have to do is pour water in, push the ice making button, and 10 minutes later, you have ice for your drinks. Now, there are two ways to run the ice maker. Now, all the testing that I just did was off the AC wall adapter. And we saw around 130 to 127 watts uh, being pulled from the wall into the fridge whenever it was making ice. So that's a lot of power. The other way to run the ice maker is by using the internal battery. EcoFlow has let me know, and they have it stated here on the front of the fridge, that this does not support ice making just off 12 volts alone. The reason is that that is pulling over 10 amps and a lot of cigarette plugs and things like that are not rated for over 10 amps of power. So keep that in mind. You have to have the AC wall adapter to make ice, or you have to have the internal battery installed. Now, of course, I also tested an ice making session using the internal battery to see how much power it would lose. So I started at 100%, and by the time it was done with one ice making session, it dropped down to 85%. So expect around 15% battery loss every time that you make ice. Now, you can charge up that internal battery with solar panels. You can charge it up with 
you know, DC input from your vehicle or a power station. You just have to have that battery in place so that it takes most of the power and then you have supplemental power coming in and charging it up. For example, I did another test where I had the EcoFlow River 2 Pro plugged in to the fridge and when it was making ice, it was pulling around 100 watts of power from this. So it was kind of keeping the battery at the same state of charge. It only lost a couple percent and then right after it charged it right back up where it was before. So think of the battery as kind of a load sharing where it's not gonna pull too much power from your DC. And then once it's done, it charges back up. So pretty complicated. Hope you guys understand how that works. Um, really impressed with the ice maker, but it does pull a lot of power. So you have to have that power available. Now, if you guys are interested to see how this fridge compares against all the other fridges I've tested on the channel, I'll include a link down in the video description to my fridge comparison chart. So you can see the performance, efficiency, and price of all the other models I've tested. Okay, well that's basically everything that I wanted to cover with the EcoFlow Glacier. Now for being their first 12 volt compressor fridge, I've been very impressed. I haven't had any issues. Everything's worked as designed. So I gotta give them credit. This thing actually works pretty well. Now talking about the actual MSRP of 1099, let's talk about some other big brand names like Dometic, Angle, ARB. Those fridges in this same size category are going to be more expensive than this model. And with this launching at 799 for the early bird pricing, it actually makes it pretty competitive. So I'd love to get your guys' feedback about this 12 volt compressor fridge. Throw a comment down below. Let me know what you think about the EcoFlow Glacier. Should they make a bigger one? Should they make a smaller one? I'm sure they'd be listening if you guys make some comments in the comment section. So thank you guys so much for watching the video. Please give me a thumbs up if you liked the review. And if you do like this type of content, maybe you'd be interested in subscribing to the channel because I do a ton of reviews about power stations, solar panels, and 12 volt compressor fridges. We'll see you guys in the next one.